Thank you, sir. Now, without wasting any time, I would like to hand over the stage to our moderator, Mr. Sudhish Srinivasan. <coughs> Um, good morning, everyone. I think uh, um, I can talk for you all in expressing my uh, happiness in having these esteemed directors here as part of the panel. The panel is called Directors Forte, um, and uh, I hope I can get some of my and, as an extension, your questions answered by, by these directors as well. Um, perhaps we should start by talking about film festivals, um, given that's where we are presently. Um, Manju, among other uh, pleasures of being at a festival, um, it's the opportunity to catch films from across regions. Um, and as somebody who's been part of many festivals yourself, um, you've been part of the jury at many festivals. One of your films is uh, being screened at 3 p.m. today, I think. Um, could you talk about the importance of festivals in uh, taking your cinema across regions and uh, also about the seeming resurgence um, of uh, Asimus cinema across uh, the globe presently? Yeah, very good morning to you all. It's a pleasure to participate here uh, with you. Actually, I didn't expect too many audience, but it is a surprise and a, and a pleasure, of course, uh, because everybody is busy watching films, world films, all the premieres and all. But yes, uh, these film festivals are very important, I feel, always. Nowadays, the age of internet, I know that you can watch film. Uh, released uh, in the latest time everywhere, but uh, still I feel watching a film together in a uh, theater is something like my film or his film or this thing, all the you know details of the film, sound, everything. Uh, so it is more enjoyable in a bigger screen. And uh, <coughs> festivals uh, during uh, our time, long time back, festivals were the only uh, you know, uh, only platform where we could see the world flames. Otherwise, uh, those flames was beyond our reach. I still remember when I visited Bangladesh, Dhaka with my first film in 2000, 1999. So all of us, all the filmmakers from India, uh, we were uh, busy collecting, you know, DVDs from the market because in Bangladesh during that time also, all the world flames DVDs were available in the market <laughs> and we tried to collect as many as flames we could. So that was a very uh, exciting, uh, those were very exciting moments. And this EP, International Film Festival of India, this is a platform where we could see the, this is my 12th visit in Goa, by the way, in EP. Uh, this is my 12th uh, this thing, and my film is the fifth entry in the Indian panorama. And otherwise, I came as a string committee member or jury at SAS. So these film festivals, even at Assam, in Assam, Guwahati, we have started recently. Hello. Uh, uh, so there also the new generation uh, is being able to watch good films. And we have cine clubs uh, all over India. Those cine clubs also are doing superb job. Kolkata Film Festival, Kerala International Film Festival, Bangalore. And all these film festivals are trying their best to reach out the best of uh, films in the world. And I think that film festival has tremendous contribution uh, to develop uh, the taste and the making of good films in the world. Right. Um, Mr. Ram, you've always expressed uh, a lot of fondness for festivals in many of the conversations we've had before. Um, your past two films, both the uh, Peranba and uh, Tharamani have made the rounds at festival before their uh, wider release. Um, so perhaps you'd like to touch upon uh, your experiences yeah. there. And yeah, for uh, every film director, is kind of a dream is flying with this film, right? Yeah. It's kind of a pleasure or kind of it. But uh, when I made my first movie in 2007, I didn't even apply to the National Award. I don't know that something called IFI is happening. So from my second movie, I started to come to IFI. And uh, this is my fourth year here. But after going to Rotterdam, Shanghai, and Frankfurt, what I realized is that it is also a market. Festival is also a market. Then I realized we should not worry the scales of festivals. We have to do the movies to our artistic sense and to our people. If they like it, let them take it. We don't, we don't need to go and compromise or change our qualities to them. And that's what I realized because if you ask a European curator, he will tell a different opinion. If you ask an Asian curator, he will tell a different opinion. And um, so you, you can't buy opinions. You can make movies to your people. But festival is one thing for when you can't make, when you don't have a script, which is not your industry, is not supporting. 
then you can do a independent film, reach festivals, then get the market and come back to the people. I, I strongly feel whatever the movie is shown in Ifi or Rotterdam or Shanghai, Tamil audience will enjoy the same movie in the theatre. It is not the problem with the audience, it is the problem with the distributors. Because it is like what you say, it's a distributors kind of monotonous. They feel that only the star movies can run or uh, only the branded movies can run. But we can break it and uh, from a Tamil Nadu I feel I have a kind of a very progressive liberal audience because from my first movie and it was hard to release the movie for me, for every movie, but when it goes to the theatre I get my money back and they respect me, value me and they wait for my next movie. So when you have a good audience, you don't need to worry, you can do whatever movie you want and you can use the festival to promote you, brand you and brand your movie. And uh, if you suppose you are the uh, even the initial days you're writing the script, then go to the script labs. There are a lot of script labs from Sundance, even if there is a script lab, Panorama script lab. So you can meet a lot of other mentors. So you can have an idea about how the world screenplay is moving on. So that's what I can suggest. If you want, if you are writing scripts, uh, go to the script labs. It will take one year. It is very less when compared to a mainstream industry. To become a director, you should work at least five years hard to go and pitch. But if you have a good script, you can reach a script lab, travel around for one year, meet your mentors, come back. You will have the confidence. Then when you make that movie, it is easy to get into the festival also because you're already in the script lab. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm, I'm sticking with you uh, for the moment. I think I know the answer to this, but uh, there is a tendency to label some films as festival films. Um, is this a label you agree with? Is this label detrimental, useful? No, I don't think so. You can't label any movie as a festival movie or a mainstream movie. As a movie, is a movie. Uh, you can say either from your own perspective, it's you like it or you don't like it. That's what I feel. Yeah. Um, Mr. Sriram, you are often uh, spotted standing in queues at the uh, Mumbai Film Festival. Um, and I understand that a lot of people even come to the festivals to try and have conversations with you while you're, while you're in the queue. When did the festival bug uh, bite you? Well, uh, my first festival was the same uh, iffy, but it was in Delhi at that time when I was in the institute. And for us, the thing was to try and catch as many films as you can. We used to sit with the catalogue, make those circles and watch this, watch this, and try to catch five films in a, in a day, you know. And I think the main advantage of festivals is you get that, uh, of course, the, like they said, the overall exposure to new cinema, which today, like she said, is uh, available otherwise, if you can, there are various methods to download a film and so on, you know. But uh, the other thing is, I think, the fantastic thing of just being with people who are in the same uh, zone, you know, and just that interaction is hugely, I mean, it may not be immediately valu valuable, but it's hugely kind of uh, enriching, you know, just being five, seven days with people who are all thinking, breathing movies, as they say, you know. Mm -hmm. And how far have the films um, you've caught at these festivals after circling, of course, the schedules? How far have they impacted your creative choices? Well, uh, I mean, very much because uh, actually, uh, for me, what happens is not before before the institute, uh, I used to be just knowing Hindi, Indian cinema to some extent, Hindi cinema maximum, and Hollywood, whatever, you know. But then this sort of opens you up so much, you know, to other ki kinds of storytelling and so on. The other thing I want to say is, I sometimes feel a lot of people, you know. When they write a script, tell me, I think this is a festival film I'm writing, you know. They are hoping that it's going to go into some festival and what he's saying, travel the world. That should not be the intention, you know. The intention is just write something which you really believe in and uh, which resonates with the people around you. If it goes to a festival, great. I don't personally, you know, apply to festivals because in the sense, I'm not completely mainstream, but I try my best to make films for audiences who are going to buy tickets and watch my film. And I'm buying their time and they are buying my whatever promise. So I think, uh, like you said, like, like they said, I mean, the festival is a huge thing, but we should not try and write as a okay. I'm writing a festival film. You know, that sort of negates the whole purpose. Right. Um, let's try and dig a bit deeper into some of your uh, creative choices. Um, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Ram. Um, you've always spoken about your films as being theses. Um, it, it seems almost an analytical way of looking at it for, for, for the outsider when, uh, when somebody uses the word thesis, thanks to our education, I think. Um, could, you, could you shed light on the process of how you go from identifying a topic and later to develop it into, into the thesis that you speak about? Um, I think it could be quite useful for a lot of filmmaker aspirants here. I simply feel whatever the story is, it's a filmmaking or writing a short story or you're writing a epic, it is very simple. The narrator is telling his particular truth about something he witnessed or he understands and he tells to the other. That's the thing. So what is a particular truth? Where it comes from? The particular truth comes from the time of the period where you live and uh, 
time of the literature movement and philosophical movement and political movement. These three things, of course, influence everybody, not only the writer, whoever lives here. So when you see something, what happens in the society, for example, if you take Katra Kamal, so uh, 92 India signed in God and globalization was coming in and privatization in the education has come. And I felt there is a, the government is not giving focus to the arts and humanities department. When you don't teach arts and humanities, when you don't give arts and humanities to your next generation, it may create sociopath. So that is what I understood by being there in Chennai in uh, early 2000. Then I, I made it as a screenplay. That particular tooth is Katra Tamil. It is not about Tamil actually. If suppose I made the movie in Telugu, it is might have been what I learned is Telugu. If I learned, made the movie in Hindi, then it is Hindi MA or Marathi MA. So it's not about language or culture. It's about how a globalization has started to treat a uh, metropolitan city and how it's changed the lifestyle. And uh, instead of poverty, I understand there is a kind of a huge lifestyle differences were happening. For example, one was earning three, th three lakhs and another one was earning 3,000 rupees. They live in the same road. So the, and the three lakhs rupees you have to spend. You have to get a Audi car or you have to get a Ray-Ban glass or a woodland shoe. And this lifestyle, dressing sense, everything humiliates the other. So it's not about the poverty. So that humiliation creates a sociopath. That's what, how I work my script. That's what for Katarathamal, for Tangamingal again, how the globalization get into the primary school education and even to the interior villages, into the small towns, inside the family relationship. And Taramani was, I can say it's kind of a trilogy. Taramani was, after globalization, I, what are the changes happen in male-female relationship? So, so what? It was this, was this incidental though, um, that all these films were about the effects of globalization? Was this, I mean, was this a product of your times as you speak about or wa was this something in your... Because I live in uh, 2007 to 2019 in Chennai, so I see this every day of my life. And whoever I meet, they talk about these things or they handle these things in life. So when you live in this time period, you of course you do it. But if you come to Pair and Bill, it was my kind of a real experience. I met a spastic parent. Through them, I got introduced to the spastic society. Then I worked with them, doing some phototherapy exercises for the kids. There, I hear a lot of real life stories. Through that, I had a kind of a question about nature. So I, I found out the thesis from the nature and made parent. So it's like what I witness, what I get in, or which disturbs me, or which irritates me, or which makes me angry, or which makes me depressed, or which makes me happy. There is a truth behind it, so I'm trying to make a story out of it. Right, and I'll ask you this. Um, um, I'll ask as an extension of what we are talking about. Um, a lot of people respond to films often by by analyzing the protagonist of the film. Um, they often discuss the hero at length, um, and this is something that you haven't particularly enjoyed about uh, people writing about your films. You've always spoken about um, how it's important. It's almost chauvinistic to speak about the male protagonist at length so much and analyze the film through through that person. So, so could you could you talk about the pitfalls of doing? That? Uh, you're talking about film criticism. What happens in Tamil Nadu? There are two kind of film critics in Tamil Nadu who writes about Tamil movie in Tamil and who writes in English about Tamil movie, okay? There are two different kind of people, I can say, from their perspective itself or the understanding itself. Of course, you need variety of interpretation. And what happened with my movie, I never had an antagonist in my movie. Uh, last four movies, I never had an antagonist. I never made a script with antagonist. So the problem is my particular truth is the antagonist or it creates the whole plot. When the critic or the audience not able to accept that critic, they want to slap me. Uh, literally, they call me psycho and all. And when they accept the particular truth, then again they call me God and all. So these two things are happened. So I don't want anyone who comes to watch my movie, either they should support my movie or should get agitated. They want to come and slap me or write bad about me. They, because it's not about me, they're writing about themselves. So I always feel whatever movie you make, it should create a disturbance to the audience and it should create a debate in the society. So four of my movies, it happened, and they always look, my protagonist, they will look with this uh, three-act structure, character arc, character flow. I never made movies with three-act structure, and I never worried about character flow, because my thesis is allowing me to make the story. Through, for that, I'm finding the character. So the character is representing my particular truth. So that's the confusion, or that's the kind of uh, difference between me and few critics. And uh, so, of course, because Everybody plays, uh, everybody understands film from their own perspective or whatever they learned or whatever the movies they follow, right? But I strongly believe the critics came back again because what I realized, there's two ways of getting into the critic. Either the critic will accept, the audience will deny. 
First, the critic may deny, but audience will accept. Then after two years, critic will also accept. So that's what happens for me. Um, how much of this would you say is a consequence of the star system, this, this uh, emphasis and the over-importance on, on the male uh, protagonist of a film? You're asking about uh, generally why we have to go behind a hero? Or that kind of a question you're asking about my movie, I don't understand. No, because there is so much emphasis on the star system, there is a big uh, fan following to those stars and the conversation over films is generally uh, rooted mm -hmm. through the prism of these okay. actors mainly. Okay. I'm asking you if um, this uh, uh, view of uh, analyzing your films through your heroes right. that you disagree with, yeah. I'm asking you if it's a result of, of the prevailing system. Yeah, because, uh, because the industry is controlled or ruled by the artist, that means mainstream artist, and they are they are much more needed because without them the industry can't survive, right? We need a market and we need big heroes for that. But my movies, I never cast a big hero. Even Mr. Mamuti was a big hero in Kerala. Tamil Nadu was like after 10 years coming into the movie. So I, it's not like a star in Tamil Nadu, but it, it helped me in Kerala market, right? So usually the viewers or uh, the usual, they, uh, they always follow the movie through the protagonist because that's what they taught in film schools, right? Every protagonist has a goal. He reaches a goal or not. That is a story. But my protagonist never had a goal. And I don't know if they reach it or not. Because I never had a goal. And I met a lot of people who never had a goal. Or never had a conflict or a kind of a thing what we see regularly in a film. So it, sometimes so film critics or audience, initially, they started to look through the movie in the protagonist's perspective. And uh, they may like it or may get irritated. They, they, they were heavy charges on me because my protagonist talks very rugged or something which is totally sometimes very conservative, feudal, sometimes very postmodernistic. Because I am not speaking, it's not my perspective. For my particular truth, I'm playing the character like that. But don't worry about what, that's what I'm saying, never worry what they're going to write down on your paper. As he said, if a guy comes to your theater, watches a movie, and he still he remembers your movie, even after 12 years, he messages, messages you about your first movie, and he demands you, why don't you do a movie like that? That's what the success. So don't make a movie for this Friday. <laughs> Of course, this Friday we have to collect our money back, but make a movie which people can remember after 10 years. Because my first movie was a collapse and it was a disaster in the market and I took a long struggle to my, do my second movie, but still now, which saves me in the market is my first movie. Because the audience who came after, who was studying 8th standard, 9th standard, they all watched the movie later and they came to my second movie, they got, my, they got their own money to take the ticket. So when I made my second movie, which I acted, everybody thought, uh, for example, Kamala Theatre said, we'll give you one show because you're a new actor, nobody knows, there's a small child, we don't know how many people will turn up. The first day, it was like houseful and they increased the show to the four, after the, that it went for 15 days houseful. It's all happened just because of my first movie, not because of my second movie. People who were followed the movie and they waited, they came. So, you will get rejected even for film festival when you apply for script lab, when you make your script, producers may reject, but don't give up your idea, do movie what you want. That's what people really want to see. Okay. So, Sriram, there seems to be a new uh, um, hero in uh, the in the cinema industry these days. Um, actors like uh, Varun Dhawan and uh, and uh, of course Ayushman Khurana, who you've worked with. Um, it seems that despite their popularity, they don't seem limited by. Uh, by, by, by their fame in picking the sort of scripts that they do. Um, how do you view this emergence of, of actors like these and how useful are these to films that you'd like to make? See, uh, for me what happens, I've been lucky in the sense I've probably caught them before they became the big stars that they are, you know. I don't know whether the same actors after five big successes would want to, uh, you know, do something which is a little offbeat. But luckily, so, sort of, I must say ki, there is a certain uh, they also realize that, you know, the usual thing is not really working anymore. Yes, now and then the big popular star written film will, will do very well. But they also are willing to experiment. But there is still that little, it's not like, you know, they're all embracing all kinds of roles. It's not so, so easy. So for every film I've done, there are many actors who have refused. It's just that, uh, you know, you catch the right person who's hungry. The main thing you look for in, a, in an actor is a certain hunger to, and uh, sort of a connection with the character. So I do, I'm not looking at, you know, okay, I must take a star for this movie. The last film did so much business, so next one has to do so much business. All that is nonsensical kind of thought processes in your own head. So if the person suits the role and he seems to be very, kind of has an empathy to the character and connects, then I think that's what we actually uh, go for. 
and uh, I hope you're right when you say actors are willing to experiment more. Let's see. Right. About 10 years back, I think, after the after your first film, um, I read in an interview that you had almost flirted with working with two big stars for your for your film. Um, has has there been a marked shift in uh, how you um, approach casting for films since then, or, or <coughs> not? Re not really. That the particular film you're talking about didn't happen. It had at that time John Abraham and the Ishwarya. I think that's the one you're talking about. So oh, that actually uh, they both were sort of ready. It was just that I was not personally happy with the with the second half. The second half of the second half. You know, the movie had a beautiful. It was going very well, and then I didn't know how it's going to end. So, I mean, I was just not happy. So I kept pushing that. Then I, then I told my producer, if you don't mind, I can shoot up to this point, and then anyway, they, there is a gap, and then I will crack the rest. You know, they all got terrified. So I said, <laughs> we keep it aside. But one day I hope I'll I'll crack that answer. You know, there are times when you write something and it's you've got it's there, but it's not there kind of thing. You know, and maybe years later suddenly you get the answer. You know, so that kind of a thing. Um, Manju, you've been making films for almost uh, two decades now. Um, over this time, would you say the battle for uh, representation, insofar as female filmmakers are concerned, has it become easier during this period from your uh, experience? In Assam, in Northeast, actually, we don't have such problems. Being a film, a female filmmaker, I didn't have to face many problems. Uh, initially, well, in the first film in uh, 1998, uh, there were some reservations from the crew members, like uh, they were thinking maybe Madam is not. Uh, familiar to the technicality of filmmaking, you know, like cinematography, camera work, editing and all those things, sound and all. And uh, myself also, I was a little bit nervous to say action in the first day, first, uh, you know, uh, so sequence of the day, I mean, of the film. It was, uh, I was really afraid how to, I mean, when to say uh, light sound action and all those things, you know, it was very difficult for me. I, I was literally very nervous. Then I asked my chief assistant director, see, you control all this, I will see everything. <laughs> so you say action and all those cut things, then I will control everything. But, uh, you know, uh, somehow, I have, my background is literature actually. When I came to filmmaking area, uh, already I was 40 years plus. So my life experience and everything, no, my literature background, I knew what is uh, what to do when. Uh, so that confidence was already there. And the initial two, three days, maybe I was nervous in the practical field of shooting. But earlier, I uh, got prepared with all my you know, locations, my uh, script, everything. Script was written by somebody else. There also, I had to face little bit of problems because he was a renowned film uh, script writer from Assam. So he was very particular that not a single scene is to be edited, by the, uh, to be handled by the director. Then I said, no, I'm not a, uh, you know, uh, puppet on the string, he will control the string, I will do it in the, uh, you know, uh, a field. So I will do according to my wish, which I feel is required, and uh, that way I will make the film. So that way he also became quiet. After that he did not interfere me at all. So that confidence I had, so otherwise I didn't have any problem as a woman filmmaker, like my family, my husband, he supported a lot. And I think in India, uh, for a film, female filmmaker, married filmmaker, I think this is the most important thing that husband uh, should support. Because it is 24 hours job, as you know, I have to travel a lot, I have to work 20, I mean, I have to be away for my shoot for one month or two months like that. So in that area, I need that support uh, from the uh, family, immediate family of the house. So that way I was very lucky. And financially also, like uh, though our films are very small budget, but still I'm very lucky to have some good producers. They came and supported me, some family people, some friends. And till now I'm so happy that uh, most of my films, actually this film uh, got the ninth uh, national award, you know, ninth Rajat Kamal. Uh, so um, out of my, uh, out of my 11 films, uh, getting ninth, uh, nine Rajat Kamal, so I'm very proud of it What myself. is the trick, ma'am? You know anybody there? <laughs> 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 so, you know, that helps me a lot to get back my uh, fund. Even my producers are so happy. Uh, now three producers are in the queue. Madam, you make a film who will get, you know, national award. Then I said, I cannot promise you a national award. But because they think if I make a film, the film is sure to get national award or selection in the panorama. And for some people, it is such a prestige, you know. And they really looking, uh, they really look forward to get such a recognition. And uh, now two, three producers are there queuing up, but I am not ready now. 
uh, mentally and physically also. I said, oh, let's go slow. Maybe coming here, I'll make a film. So that way, and Assam is a small market, as you know. Without getting some recognition, just making a film and releasing in the theater is really very difficult. Now, lately, we are doing well. Some filmmakers like Rima Das, you may be knowing, and uh, Bhaskar Hajirika and few newcomers, they are releasing their films in the theaters, and they are getting good response. And that way, we are very lucky that new generation have come to a stage where now film has no, like here Mr. Ram said, that film, what, what is festival films? There should not be any, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, uh, the two different opinion, two different, uh, what do you call it, definitions of films, like festival films and mainstream films. You make good films, what you get convinced with the subject, like I always do. The subject I have to know, I have to go through it, I have to experience it in, because Northeastern India, Northeast India is such a place. We have more than 200, uh, you know, ethnic groups of people. They speak their own languages. And lately I'm concentrating on those areas so that people come to know that these people exist in this world and they speak their own dialects, they have their own tradition, own, own kind of uh, status in the society, but still their stories are universal. This story today, which is going to be screened, it is also also the same. Uh, though they live in a very remote place in the easternmost part of the country, and they are only five, less than 5,000 in numbers, but their, you know, their beliefs, their lifestyle, their everything, you know, uh, it is like any other uh, people living in any other place of the world. So that way, I'm very, uh, you know, very Susie in uh, selecting my subjects. My it is basically issue-based. Uh, some issues I try to focus on. There is no hero, no heroine in my films. So I want to speak something through the film, the whole film, the whole situation, like that. And language also I'm trying, not only in mainstream Assamese, but few dialects they speak, uh, you know, these ethnic groups of people. So that way I'm just going on. So I'm happy that I have been able All to... All the best for national yeah. next national award. Oh, no, no, please, you have to be <laughs> jury there. <laughs> Uh, I hope you become one of the juries. <laughs> uh, you were the jury when my movie came? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> uh, so Some sort of deals are happening here. <laughs> <laughs> right, some deals. Uh, but don't think that next time when I'm going to get one lesson, what he is there. <laughs> He'll be there. I'll make it. <laughs> Mr. Sridham, could you uh, touch upon your experiences of uh, watching films by uh, female filmmakers um, and uh, as a uh, male filmmaker yourself, um, what are some, some things that you generally have trouble uh, getting into films that they seem to do it effortlessly or, or is, has this nothing to do with I, gender? I, I don't know, yes. I had gone for a panel discussion about where, where all these, then I don't think they like to be categorized as female filmmaker, male filmmaker, no? so I don't know. I mean. Uh, Unless you ask the question, then you start thinking about, okay, in this film made by this lady, was yes. this, otherwise it's like a, it's a film, you know. Yeah, I so I don't think it's a gender-based thing at all. I so think. there's no connection. I mean, it's just that I'm not a male. Are you a male filmmaker or just I'm a, a filmmaker? Film? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like that. So. Genderless. Yeah. As a writer also, you can't have a gender, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But wouldn't you say um, identity is sort of important in order to... I mean, till till we get to a space where where things are even, um, like with caste, for example, is isn't that uh, uh, description important? Wouldn't you? I see. I uh, what I mean to say is, in, I mean, uh, when you when somebody is making a film, the fact that they are male or female is not really the vital thing. You know, like for example, if I'm making a film about an, uh, I mean, my first film was about uh, the protagonist was a female character, the main protagonist. Now it was written by a. a, a a girl, you know. So now, naturally, I mean, this kind of mixture happened. Now, it could have well been that I have written that story and she's directed it. It could have happened. And she would definitely add, bring her thought processes, her sensibilities, and vice versa. You know? So I am somehow not able to, I mean, uh, I don't know, one of them can probably give a better answer on that, but I, I actually don't believe in this. You know? I mean, if there is Sai Paranjpe, there's also Rishikesh Mukherjee, and kind of thing. There is no, I don't look at it like that. You know? Right. We uh, all will give that same kind of answer. <laughs> Manju, location, uh, you touched upon the location of your films and yeah. it's such a big aspect of your film right, sounding. Right. Um, you mentioned, I think, in an old interview that you've survived because you've, uh, uh, you make films based on the Northeast. Yes. Um, despite the challenges, including those uh, related to the budget um, that you touched upon, um, what, what keeps you making films about stories there? 
what what's the driving force is it is is, is it your driving, familiarity the driving force is the color of our region the different communities having their different culture different lifestyle and it is so complex the political situation there that political thing is has always come up when i deal with a film this film also you will see my backdrop is very much so political though the uh, the story is about uh, uh, about uh, the super about the superstition practiced in their society uh, but the backdrop is more important uh, it has come out quite well i feel that the relationship between two countries uh, so that political situation i think is one of the most important criteria of my films like i made one film who is got nargis dot award uh, that is called i code nai ma where mother is not there that is a very peculiar subject uh, some of the people of the country are not aware of the uh, problems of the interstate problem interstate relationship problem we know about international i mean that relationship between two countries but not about between two states so nagaland and assam are having a long i mean since uh, post independent time nagaland and assam are still now even today there are a lot of disputes are happening so people come down from Nagaland to Assam. They destroy the, uh, the properties of Assam. Even Assamese people try to go and, and cross, I mean, occupy their areas. They come down to occupy our areas, I mean, Assam's areas. Uh, but in that process also, that human relationship, that human stories are very deep, that living uh, in that bordering area, those people, Nagas and Assamese, they have some very good and close relationship that is called human relationship. So that uh, I focused on that film, uh, that relationship, about that relationship. Like one, uh, one day some Naga people came down and they burned, uh, burned a village. In that process, one small child got lost. The parents were very worried. They thought uh, he was burned in that process in the house. Uh, but ultimately, they came to know that the child is alive in a Naga village. They went uh, in charge of that. Uh, house that family and they found that one naga mother is feeding that baby she is a very small baby six seven months old and uh, that uh, that moment at that moment you forget about geographical status you forget about linguistic and other political status then you become one human that human thing it comes out so that is that was my story in that film so those things we have been uh, watching we have been experienced from our childhood and uh, about a Boru film I made, uh, that is also a socio-political uh, this thing, uh, story. Like what is happening in uh, Boru land today? These Boru people, they are the most uh, uh, Aboriginal people of Assam. They were the first to come and settle down in Assam. And uh, still, they are even now they are trying to get their uh, existence to be established politically and socially, language-wise also. <coughs> their language is not given you know, national status, I mean, in the state, but now they are getting. Uh, but uh, politically also, they are far behind. Politically also, they are not uh, gi given proper status. So they are demanding for a different state. Their agitation is going on. In that process, some groups of boys, they are, they are, joining, they are uh, joining in some insurgent groups. They are becoming, you know, rebel. Uh, how to express, I don't know. Uh, so that kind of uh, situation, I tried to portrayed in my film. So that is also a political film. And another film I made, uh, Laz, Shame. So that is universal because we boast about India as a developing country. But is it really happening in India? That is my question. Because I travel a lot in the interiors. Uh, six of the year, six months of the year, I stay in the villages, in the interior places, looking for meeting these people and uh, looking for the stories and trying to find out their uh, stories, I mean, their lifestyle and all. So then I found in the interior part of the state, even now, uh, children are not getting proper, uh, you know, proper education, no proper schools. Those Sarva Shiksa and all those Yojanas are there. The schools, if you see there, all the ricket, I mean, broken chairs and tables and broken houses, one shade, no water, no proper water, no sanitation, nothing. And children are just coming just to have a midday meal. Just to, and that is also, you know, uh, all the time you hear a lot of stories getting poisonous, I mean, uh, food poison happening. 
and all these people are enjoying the middlemen and all the contractors, but the contractors, but children are not getting proper opportunities to have proper education in a proper atmosphere. So those things uh, happen, and then I um, made this film about a girl who is very intelligent, but because of her uh, this thing, and her uh, this thing, her situation at home. She is uh, motherless, she is very poor, she could not continue her education, she has just become a worker in the house. She is trying to sell fish in the market like that. So that way I am trying to focus on the real happenings in the state, in the region, uh, through my films, so that at least some concerned authority will come to know, it will come to their notice and people will realize what we are really, uh, our position, social and political situation in the region. So that is the main objective main region why I make these kind of claims. Right. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ram, talking about uh, setting, um, be it the concrete jungle in Tarmani or that lonely cabin in uh, Peranb, um, settings played a big part in some of your uh, films. Um, and they've also acted as metaphors for what the characters themselves are going through. Um, as a filmmaker, as a writer, when did you recognize the metaphorical significance of a setting? Um, were you always aware of this? Did, did literature and films that you were exposed to help you understand this? I did my master's in Tamil literature and there's a kind of a text for a sort of philosophy. It's called Tolgapiam, which was dated 4,000 years back. There, um, uh, the Tolgapiam says that every human being's mind internally, externally, is controlled by the time and space where you live. In the time, he splits the time into a bigger time and a short time. Bigger time is the season, say like summer, winter. Shorter time is like 3 o'clock morning, afternoon, evening. So what Tolgapir says actually, if a man gets angry in a winter, in the early morning, then his reactions may be little less, it will, the reaction won't be like in summer, in the mid, mid noon. So the, that means that the climate and the place where he lives always plays a major role, whoever it is. As uh, nature controls a plant, uh, controls a bat, it controls our mind too. That's why you spend a lot of money to come to go and sit near the beach, right? And, uh, and we have split the land in five times. It's called Kurunji, Mullai, Marudam, Nidal, Palai. That means Kurunji means mountain, Mullai means forest, Marudam means uh, farmland, Nidal is ocean, Palai is desert. So all our Sangam literatures were written according to these five landscapes and connected to the properties which belongs there. And with that properties, with that uh, location, you can say your subject. So in our thing, subject comes last. First is location and the season. Next is property. And third is the subject. So that's all. Right. Um, while you were talking about how people's anger um, is different in different uh, parts of uh, different times of the year, I also got remem uh, reminded of one of your other influences, which is uh, uh, Albert Camus, The Stranger. Yeah. Outsider. Yeah, outsider. Yeah, for Kachar uh, Tamil, because it's about alienation, who guys who is living in a metropolitan city where he feels he's not, he doesn't belong there, he doesn't have a place to go anywhere to, and lifestyle disturbs him, he get alienated from the place where he lives, and he get alienated from his mind too. So there is a text for us before about alienation is Albert Camus, outsider or stranger. So, is it a matter of concern to you that uh, the audience may not be aware? aware of these layers or do you think it goes through subconsciously and that's the point of the exercise? No, I always feel audience understands everything perfectly, not the critic. Okay. <laughs> because uh, audience just watch the movie, right? And uh, if you are simple and it is easy, they, they don't know to say what is metaphor, what is simile, what is layer, but they will, they can understand because the movies, we didn't make the story by ourselves. It's about them only, right, at the end of the day. It's about the same sky, same earth, same river, same wind. So they can't understand it. They will understand it by their own sense, but they may not be having the same language what we have to express. Language is just a kind of a inform so whatever language you got. It's just a craft or information, right? So this art is before language itself. Poetry was written before the language has even been invented. Or if you take Pablo Neruda, he says, the poetry is here on this planet before even human beings has come, right? Yeah. Right. Um, Mr. Sriram, in an old interview, um, you had spoken about uh, uh, Badlapur and you were discussing the writing of that film. And you mentioned that uh, some people, you 
it was a bit disappointing that some uh, um, the, the critics he spoke about <laughs> couldn't really put two and two together um, about, about a couple of uh, events that happen in uh, Patlapur. So as a, as a writer, um, how do you draw the line between making things explicit um, or keeping them hidden and hopefully people will get it? Uh, no, I may have talked about one or two critics, so one or two people who, it was not, Badlapur actually got very favorable reviews actually, so it was not really that. But, uh, how to say, uh, just rephrase the question, I'm, because I'm thinking of, I was going with his his question, you know, actually. Because when you're talking about location, you know, like Badlapur had one thing which I, because the title of the film is, a, I mean, Badla means revenge, you know, and it also means change. So somehow, when that title was there, I was very happy. I said, now when he said about the metaphor and all that, I mean, we didn't think about all that, you know, it's just that, okay, hopefully, I mean, uh, this sort of con gets conveyed kind of thing. The more you read into a film, the more you analyze the film, of course, that is the job of the critic, and it's, I love, I mean, reading all that. But sometimes you, you just do it in a manner, and I think the viewer gets it in a much more simpler, uh, simpler manner, you know. So that was the, that, that I was still on that that thought actually. But what were you asking me? Just tell me again. As a writer, um, there are I'm, I'm sure you get into spaces in your uh, story where you can choose to uh, make it a bit more obvious than it is, or <coughs> right. or, or you know, in the oh, interest okay, of okay. Now, yeah, yeah. So what happened is actually the whole thing because in a sense I'm working with certain mainstream actors and mainstream, mainstream producers. So there is this tendency to dump it down, dump it down, dump it down so much that, you know, it's no longer a, a movie. It's like you can, might as well have told the story, you know, kind of thing. So I, my big uh, problem comes in how how m less to uh, to spoon feed the audience, you know. So in Badlapur, there were a couple of instances like that, you know, where, I mean, I, I don't want to go into detail scene because many people may not have seen the film. But uh, you wonder, I mean, do I have to say all this and all this for them to understand, you know. So you sort of, I mean, I go with actually, it has to be a film which I am able to, kind of, when I'm making it, I mean, see the storytelling kind of thing. You know? So I feel, uh, I try my best not to dump it down. And not because somebody, uh, I understand it, but others won't understand. That is the usual kind of thing you get. Even Andadun, when the end, when they were saying, okay, don't keep it a ambiguous or open end. No, no, people will not accept it. What do you, I mean, like, how do we know that, you know? So, but if that seems the right thing to do, then you do the right thing. So I think I try to work with smaller budgets and so on, so that I get that freedom to do it exactly as I want. Right. right. Um, Manju, could you talk about your uh, uh, inspiration, some of the filmmakers who've influenced your work? Um, I read that you you enjoy Malayalam cinema and that's sort of Very played much. a part. <laughs> uh, like, uh, I feel that true Indian picture, the in true India reflects only in the original frames. Uh, though lately, even Mumbai film industry is trying to make some good Hindi films. Uh, some new concept and <laughs> new, you know, new new kind of screen, new kind of acting and all. But with glamorous artists, all those, you know. Anyway, I feel that all these you know, films from uh, Kerala, films from Tamil Nadu also. Tamil Nadu has different flavor uh, of their films. Uh, and uh, uh, even Kolkata, Assam also trying. And uh, influence-wise, since my childhood, our only entertainment was films. I grew up in a in a uh, tea estate, tea garden, and in the tea gardens, in uh, during the puja time, na Durga puja, Kali puja, you know. So they show us uh, films in open fields with the project open screen. Open screen. screen. Yeah. yeah. So the first film I remember, I was very young then. I do not know, maybe seven, eight years or six, seven years, uh, that I remember very well, Madhumati, you know? I didn't know about then uh, film directors, film writers, film music uh, directors and all. Later on, when I studied in schools and college, then I came to know about Chatterjee Rai, all these Riti Ghatta, and Bimal Roy, Raj Kapoor and all. But in my childhood, I think I was mostly influenced by the romantic films like Raj Kapoor made, like Bimal Roy, like, uh, you know, uh, here in uh, Bengal, uh, this Riti Ghatak and Chatterjee Rai. Both of them were my favorite. I always want to make a film like Bobby, even now. Somebody actually, a uh, few days back, he offered me to make a commercial film. 
uh, then he said no manju i want to make a, a commercial film you have to make it then i said okay let let me try but people will not accept me in assam as a filmmaker to uh, you know release uh, my film in the theaters no no you have to prove yourself this time you make a film for the audience for the mass people then i said then i was uh, talking with my assistant and all why not why not to make a film like bobby uh, it was such a beautiful film i mean even now i remember in my i think class 10 standard or my uh, 11 12 class i saw the film i really liked it and um, you know my influence for foreign films when i see the japanese film uh, this uh, uh, ojo now this so simple his films are so simple and they tell the stories of japan so i think even our janu borua in assam he also s makes very simple films and he makes very good assamese films which uh, as where assam is being reflected and there in Japan, I feel uh, that uh, Ojo's films, now uh, in between, I mean, few years back, I was watching all his films and I found how simple these films are, but how they reflect the country. So I am very much uh, influenced by those kind of films, though I do not follow anybody's films. And uh, in between, I was uh, falling for Fellini. Uh, so since I am, uh, my background is literature and I did my uh, MA in philosophy and all. And somehow Fellini's, uh, that his later films, not the initial, earlier films, uh, his later, I mean, uh, later films. Uh, so that was uh, an enlightening conversation that we had on the topic director's forte. Good to see the noted Assamese director Manju Bora, the southern director Ram and also Sri Ram Raghavan joining in. Remember, one of the very successful films at the box office in 2018 was Andadun and Sri Ram Raghavan is the director of that film. Ji haan, aur lagatar is film festival mein regional bhasha ki filmo ka pradarshan bhi jari hai. Abhi ki agar baat kare to saadhe char baje Ran Savat film ka pradarshan hona hai, uska star cast, nirmata nirdeshak bhi yaha pahunch rahe hai. हम आपको लगातार बता रहे हैं कि हमारा ये मेकशिफ्ट स्टूडियो मैकनीज पैलेस के प्रांगण में ही स्थित है जहां से दूरदर्शन लगातार 24 बाई सेवन डी डी इफ़ी चैनल भी रन कर रहा है साथ ही 12 बजे से लेकर 6 बजे तक आपको लाइव प्रसारण के माध्यम से इफ़ी फिफ्टी की हर छोटी से छोटी जानकारी उपलब्ध करवा रहा है एंड राइट नाउ वी कैन शो यू द इंटरव्यू विद एक्टर किशोर कुमार In 2017, the entire India and the rest of the 